Well, this is another bayonet that was found on the field at Gettysburg by J.T. Hage, and it's a pretty interesting bayonet, and there's a lot of kind of speculation on what this bayonet was used for, where it was manufactured, all that kind of stuff. So we'll go over it. Um, first, you can see the condition. It's kind of like just as found, as we say in the industry, kind of salty, has a great overall kind of attic found or battlefield found patina, if you will. And this bayonet is attributed to the Tiege rifle, which was basically being used by the Germans and the French and Europeans um, prior to the Civil War. And it is a saber bayonet. It's got a solid brass handle. Um, and in some of the literature, we read about this kind of bayonet and this specific bayonet being attributed to uh, the Colt revolving rifle and a number of other American rifles. So we're not sure what this was fixed on at the field of Gettysburg, but here it is. It was picked up by J.T. Hayes in 1863. It was brought to his shop in Emmitsburg. It stayed in his uh, family for decades, passed right down through the lineage, and is here today. So let me show you a little bit about this. Um, first of all, you can see the condition. Condition is just like really overall Pretty solid, it's got a little bit of wear, it's got storage age, it's got every kind of age on it that you would imagine to see from something that was picked up off the battlefield and then just put in storage for decades, basically. But overall, pretty solid shape. It's got this solid brass handle with this bird's head pommel up here, okay? There's a little button for the bayonet, uh, which is kind of frozen, obviously but really great patina on that brass or you know bronze hilt. We'll take, the, take the scabbard out. Actually, when you take these out, be very careful. Um, never, never take them out like this. Make sure that you always draw like this. Um, you can see the saber bay bayonet itself is actually in pretty decent shape. I mean, it's got a, a coat of kind of like a light like a light rust patina, as they say in the, in the industry, but overall, really pretty solid for what it is. I wanna talk about this a little bit. You can see on this side right up here on the blade is marked S and K really closely right here. And S and K was Schnitzler and Kirschbaum and they were a blade making firm in Solage in Germany. So we know exactly who manufactured this uh, bayonet is S&K. They're widely known as being used in the Civil War. It's a documented kind of blade that was used in the Civil War. Um, so you have S&K here. You have a couple other little kind of proof marks. Very, very small. No other markings that I can see. Um, but the interesting thing about this bayonet is the scabbard. And the scabbard is actually for an Enfield bayonet, like an 1856 pattern Enfield bayonet. It's got the same, you remember I was saying that the Germans and a lot of people were using this kind of blade. Well, this was the same type of blade that was used on the Enfield bayonet, the Sabre bayonet. So what happened was during the Civil War, someone was carrying this Tiege bayonet and they basically found, the, either lost the scabbard for that one, or just basically married the scabbard to this one. And obviously, you can see that this has been together since the Civil War. It's got the same exact matching patina and age on the throat, on the uh, drag, on the cross guard. It, it's been there forever. It's been there since the Civil War, since J.T. Hayes picked it up over the battlefield. So this is actually an Enfield scabbard, and this is a Tiege bayonet. And that's what you have. Now, obviously, the bayonet was one of the most, most important weapons for the infantrymen during the Civil War. There are many stories of really hard fighting on the field in Gettysburg. Um, one of the most famous bayonet charges in American history was on Little Round Top when Joshua Chamberlain charged the Alabama troops and won the Medal of Honor for that. Pickett's charge also was just brutal hand-to-hand -hand fighting where bayonets were employed all along the field. Um, and this one is just in really, really all original condition. Nice patina and just really fantastic relic. So this saber bayonet 
in particular could be used in a variety of different ways. Obviously, it was meant to, to fit on the muzzle of a gun and used as a spear and uh, in that kind of format, if you will, um, but also big brass handle. Say you're out of ammunition, you're in close quarters fighting, you didn't have time to fix your bayonet, this could be used as just a weapon, just like a short sword, and that's kind of also how it was was figured back in the day. It's got a solid brass handle for striking blows on your enemy if you if you wanted to. Have the business end, as you say, it has this end, so this could have been used either way on the end of a rifle or as a close quarter weapon. Now, Gettysburg items are hard to find and they're highly coveted and highly prized. And a lot of the Gettysburg items are, are just, just attribution, like, oh, this was a Gettysburg kind of thing. And we hear that in the industry a lot. And there's a lot of kind of eye rolling that goes along with that. Um, but these are documented straight from the family. They're documented in the Emmitsburg historical records. And this is just a fantastic opportunity to, to own something that actually was on the field, picked up off the field, and brought, brought home. And we're going to provide all of the chain of custody for these items um, when you buy them. So here you have a really interesting bayonet with a European background, kind of married together, all original patina, just a fantastic item, and only available on Rare Collectibles TV. This is item M1389, a Sabre bayonet for only $495. Again, that's item M1389, a Sabre bayonet for the collector-friendly price of just $495.